All right, how to hold a paddle properly. Put it on your head. You want to have 90 degrees with your arms. You're trying to make a rectangular shape with your inner arms. A rectangle is a strong shape and it will mean that you get the most out of your paddle strokes. Make sure that you're not holding your paddle too far in or too far out. What you can do as a rule of thumb is to have one fist length from the paddle blade to where you want to have your hand. This is a really easy way to, to get the right measurement. Also, what I've done is I've put some tape where I should have my hand because I, have, um, I used to have a bad habit of holding my paddle too far in. And I got a really good breach, but I lost a lot of power because I didn't have that rectangle shape. And uh, it's also not good for your bracing and stuff like that. So putting it there is forcing you to at least know where you, you're meant to have your hands. And after a while, you will just naturally hold your paddle like that. Okay, lastly, I want to make sure that my paddle blades are around the right way and not upside down. So an easy way to check this out is you want to have the pointy part of the blade at the top and the more curved, slowly curving part at the bottom. You want to have the curved, inward curving face of the blade facing you. This is going to cup the water and make paddling a lot easier. If you were to have it around the other way, then the water would just slide off the blades and it wouldn't be very efficient. So, making sure the paddle blade is around the right way and is also facing the right direction. So, now some info on paddles. This is my sea kitten paddle. It has plastic blades, which is great if you're a beginner because you can smash it on rocks and stuff like that without worrying too much. Plastic blades are quite cheap and losing a paddle is a likelihood when you start out. Although, do try not to lose paddles because there's already enough plastic floating around in the ocean. Another good thing with this paddle is that it's an adjustable paddle, a split paddle. So what I can do is I can adjust the length and I can also adjust the feather. That is the angle of the paddle blades. Now this is great if you're a beginner uh, because you want to be able to play around with different lengths and angles to find out what you like. So when you buy a more expensive paddle, you know what you want. So that's good. So the downside to this paddle is that it's heavier than say a carbon fiber or a fiberglass paddle. And also because of the split, because it's a two piece, that means it is slightly weaker than a one piece. Now that's not gonna matter if you're just paddling around Oslo Fjord, but if you were say going out in rough seas or wavy conditions, then you'd wanna have something of slightly higher quality um, and potentially having a one-piece paddle. They are the strongest. If that's the case, you're probably not watching this blog, uh, watching this video or reading the blog, so no biggie. Um, lastly, the good thing about these, these paddles is because it's a one, it's a two-piece, sorry, you can take it apart and use it as your spare paddle when you go on and get a, a better paddle in the future. It's always good to have a spare paddle with you when you go kayaking. Oh. On to river kayaking paddles. Pretty much the same as sea kayaking, although you don't necessarily need a two-piece paddle when river kayaking. One piece is fine. I would recommend getting plastic blades starting off because you're gonna be smashing a lot of rocks when you're, when you're heading down the river. Also, like I said before, they're cheaper. Um, Getting an expensive paddle for your first paddle is not such a great idea because you're even more likely to lose your paddle river kayaking than sea kayaking and you're also, you won't be able to fully appreciate the benefits that a good paddle offers. 
Spear paddles for river kayaking are usually split into three or four pieces. The reason behind this is because river kayaks are shorter and you wouldn't otherwise be able to fit the spear paddle into the back of the kayak. Every time you make a split in a paddle, you're losing strength. Just like when you tie knots in a rope, it gets weaker and weaker. This is my river kayaking paddle. It's a carbon fiber, so that means that it's super light, it's very strong, and it's one piece. So it's a lot stronger than a two or three piece paddle. This is great if I'm gonna take an impact off a waterfall or get surfed in a powerful hydraulic feature. The brand of this paddle is Select. They are a French company. I've been using these paddles for around three years and I really love them. So definitely recommend this paddle when you get a little bit better at kayaking. That's it for now. I hope that you learned something new. If you like this video, please follow our channel. And for more useful updates, give us a like on Facebook. You can follow us on Instagram. We've got new stuff coming out all the time. Uh, stay tuned, and we'll catch you around. See you next time.